Welcome back. This week's Next to Nature comes to us from a viewer question, and it's a question from bird lovers. Where are the hummingbirds? Dr. Long has a possible answer, and as always, some interesting facts. All right, welcome back to Next to Nature, everybody. Dr. John Long joining us. And, you know, I feel like this is one of those pastimes for people in the South, and that's setting out your hummingbird feeder and waiting uh, for the hummingbirds to arrive, sitting on your porch, watching them. Uh, but this week, we're going to go back to a viewer question we received. Right. And uh, someone wrote in and said they're not seeing as many hummingbirds this year. And do you think that's true, or is there a reason, or how did, or does it just happen off years? So they are migratory birds, just like we said, um, and they, you know, they have a uh, mortality rate just like anything else does. So it could be that it had a low hatch for a year that you're not seeing as many. Another thing that disperses them is because this time of year, which they stay here, they arrive like in March and they don't leave till, you know, almost November in our area. But a lot of things are blooming and that may disperse them from what you're normally seeing, especially if you're using a feeder. They're, you know, they're concentrated in on a feeder because that's their food source when there's not a whole bunch of stuff out there. Like in, you know, early March, it's not that much blooming yet. True. And now that we've got a lot of flowers, they tend to disperse. You may or may not see them based on how many flowers you have in your area and those factors like that. So, but even a drought, I guess, could affect them too. It, it could based on the availability of those flowers. They've got to feed on the nectar when they're consuming like twice their body weight. They need to, to have that type of energy source because they are constantly going as we, we know. Using a feeder is a great way to keep hummingbirds in your area, but it's important that you keep it filled and you keep it clean because they, they're using it as a source. And if you take that source away from them, they, that you're really kind of affecting their ability to feed. And yeah, those things can uh, start growing algae in them really, really quick. quick. I'm yeah. saying that from experience. <laughs> right, no, yeah, absolutely. We, you can take one of these, for instance, and you can put it in a dishwasher and clean it out and just make sure it's cleaned with uh, uh, distilled water or something like that before you put it back out, before you put feed in it, but it's quite common to do that. Just make sure you make it as natural as possible. Uh, and, and I think hummingbirds are amazing creatures. They are. Because uh, they're so tiny, wings flap so fast, right? and they travel so far. Right. That's Can you exactly kinda right. Talk, you know, you're talking about them being migratory. Yes. Talk about how far they can travel right. to and from. So our ruby-throated uh, hummingbird you'll see around here can literally fi fly 500 miles without stopping. Wow. So that, that tells you. Now, I've heard of oil rigs that keep hummingbird feeders out in the Gulf that, that help them along, but they literally can fly that far without any type of stop. The longest migration, which we don't have these in our area, but they they actually fly not at one time, but 3,000 miles. Wow. So you can imagine a little bird traveling that far. It's it's really an amazing thing, especially the ones we have in our area, just kind of wrapping our minds around how a little bird like that can travel so far. It, it's pretty amazing. They are amazing mm -hmm. creatures amazing things out in nature. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks Dr. Long. Thank you for joining us this week on Next to Nature. We'll see you again next week.